Elizabeth's relations with, with the Ottoman Empire were really, really important, both um, economically and politically. In effect, um, she set herself up as an arms dealer, and the person she did business with was the enemy. Um, Christians were forbidden to sell arms to the Ottoman Empire, which is obviously a, a, a Muslim state, um, in case they were used to kill other Christians. This is a practice that have, um, dated back uh, hundreds of years, but had been particularly reinforced after the fall of Constantinople to the Ottomans in 1453. Um, in 1570, the Pope excommunicated Elizabeth with a bull called Regnans and Excelsis, which declared her a heretic um, and an illegitimate monarch. Um, Elizabeth's rather, rather fantastic way of sticking two fingers up to the Pope um, was to turn herself into an arms dealer. She sold um, the, the relics of the Reformation. Um, she took the lead piping from the old monastery. She took the, the bells and melted them down. She took the statues. Um, she took you know, the, the, the leads from their roofs. And she packed them all up and she sent them off um, to Turkey to be turned into guns and ordnance to kill Christians with. Um, as if this wasn't magnificent enough, she did so um, whilst describing herself as the, you know, the greatest defender of, of the Christian faith that ever was, um, the repudiator of idolatry. Um, so she portrays herself as the, sort of the ultimate Christian prince, while at the same time selling, selling guns to um, Murad and his descendants. Um, so economically this was very significant for England, it was one of the ways in which um, Elizabeth re-established trade in what after all was a fairly impoverished country when she inherited it. But it's also extremely uh, important to note that Elizabeth was the first English monarch who had any diplomatic official contact with the Ottoman court. The, the letter which survives between her and Murad is the first example of such communication, which in itself is quite radical, it's quite daring. Instead of seeing the Ottomans as, as enemies or at best exotic strangers, Elizabeth um, humanises them. Um, she enters into a detailed correspondence not only with the Sultan, but rather fabulously with two other very significant women. Um, his mother and his favourite, uh, Safiya, who was um, his concubine and also the mother of, of, of his preferred son. Um, I find it very interesting that in our conceptions of the Ottoman court we imagine women to be insignificant players, they're lurking in the harem. In fact, these two very powerful women um, practically ran the, the Ottoman court between them for many years, and certainly Murad himself saw no bar to doing business with Elizabeth, either as a woman um, or as a supplier of ordnance for his, his wars against Christianity. I've done. Elizabeth's position as, as a heretic, um, as an outcast in, um, within the, the circles of, of the monarchs of Europe, was actually economically very advantageous to her. It forced her to be enterprising, it forced her to look elsewhere. Um, one very good example of this is her relation with Russia. Um, it would be incorrect to attribute the first exhibition uh, exhibition. Can I start again? Yeah. It, it wouldn't be correct to attribute the first expedition to, um, to Russia to Elizabeth. Um, that happened during her brother Edward's reign. But the establishment of the Muscovy Company, the encouragement of British merchants, and the correspondence between the, uh, the rulers of Russia and England, respectively Elizabeth I and Ivan the Terrible, um, allowed and encouraged an extremely lucrative trade to, to grow up. Not only that, but um, in the Muscovy Company and um, subsequently the Levant Company, we have really the foundation of, of, of the British Empire, which is the Joint Stock Company. Had it not been for Elizabeth's government um, and her merchants' trade in furs from, from Russia, we wouldn't really have had an East India Company, we'd never really have had an empire in, in India or in Asia. Um, and whatever one thinks about that um, morally, it's certainly a rather extraordinary thing in, in terms of trade. So um, there's this personal relationship between Elizabeth and Ivan, which, which is completely extraordinary. Um, at one point he even proposes marriage to her, though only in a diplomatic and formal fashion. I don't think he really expected to, uh, to ship her off to, to Moscow. Um, but it's, it's very up and down. He's temperamental and going slowly mad, which makes some interesting reading in their letters to one another. Um, one moment he's, he's encouraging her, her merchants and giving feasts for them, the next he's imprisoning them um, in their homes in Moscow and threatening to set fire to them. So he was, he was a, pretty, a pretty tricky customer. Um, and in terms of, of conceit, he, he was as, as grandiloquent as, as Elizabeth herself. 
Um, so you have this yeah, fascinating personal relationship between these two much misunderstood rulers, which is nevertheless the, the foundation for probably one of the most significant um, pieces of, of economic history uh, in the story of Britain.